Hi guys, welcome to the first video on this section on geological mapping. The objectives of this video are to introduce you to topographical and geological mapping and I will use a few examples just to illustrate what these two concepts are. So firstly, geological mapping involves two main things, the mapping of topography and the mapping of geological units and geological boundaries. Topography is what we use to describe the shape of the Earth's surface. And mapping geological units and geological boundaries is what we use to map what is actually happening below the surface. Firstly, we will talk about topography. A topographic map is a map that has lines that join points of the same elevation. So for example, along this line here, the surface of the Earth is 500 metres above sea level. If we take a section through this topographic map, as we have done from A through to B, we can plot this section as a cross section. So in order to do this, we can look here, our section cuts this contour at 300 metres above sea level. So at this point, the Earth's surface is 300 metres above sea level. Here, we cut at 200 metres above sea level. Then we do 300, 400, 500 metres above sea level. And we continue this process until we develop an image of what the Earth's surface looks like at this section. It's important to note that when the lines are closer together, the slope is more steep. So, for example, in this region here, where the lines are quite close together, we have quite a steep slope. Whereas in this region here, where the lines are much further apart, our slope is not as steep. This is because in this region, we are rising up one, two, three hundred metres over this length here. Whereas in this region, which is of a similar length, we are only rising up 100 metres. So therefore, this slope is much more steep than this slope. So now we understand topographic mapping, I will move on to geological mapping. Geological mapping is concerned with what is actually happening beneath the Earth's surface. What sort of rocks do we have and how are they positioned? Here I've taken the same section that we've just seen but I've drawn in some rock strata, so some layers of rock beneath the earth. All these layers are horizontal, just to keep it easy for now. So along this section from A to B, we can see that this particular rock strata has its bedding plane along this line here. And this rock strata, and this rock strata intersects with the earth's surface at this point here, between 400 and 500 metres above sea level. We can then mark this on the map. Here, this rock strata, or bedding plane, intersects the Earth's surface between 200 and 300 metres above sea level. Here. And here. When our bedding planes of our rock strata are horizontal, we draw our contours of our bedding planes parallel to our topographical contours. So we draw them like this. So we know that everything above this line here is the green rock. So therefore everything above this line here we would observe to be green. And then if we consider, we're looking down on the Earth's surface here along the contour that is 200 metres above sea level. So we're looking here and we can see green rock along the Earth's surface. So between these two bedding boundaries we have our green rock exposed on the Earth's surface. And then either side of this green band, if we're looking down on the Earth's surface here and here, we would see yellow rock exposed on the Earth's surface. So everything between this mark here and this mark here, we have yellow rock. So between here and here, we have our yellow rock. And then everything to the left of this mark here, we have also yellow rock. While we can only really confirm these patterns of rock strata exactly along this section, 
We make assumptions that allow us to extend the fact that we think the rock would occur on either side of this section. So that was just a really brief introduction to geological mapping. And in this section, we will go into a lot of detail about how we map different structures that occur in the geology below the surface of the earth. So now we have been introduced to geological mapping and topographic mapping. In this section, we will go into detail about mapping geological boundaries, folds in rock, faults in rock, unconformities and disconformities, and how to map volcanic intrusions. We will use all this to determine geological histories from geological maps, and we will do this using the five principles for reading geological maps. In the next video, I will go over these five principles, which are rather important when we are trying to decide geological histories by looking at the geological strata below the Earth's surface.